Hi, YouTubers. Today I'm going to show you how to create your own hump molds and slump molds. Now, um, anybody that has done pottery knows that they are very expensive to purchase. And when I got online and realized that they were $50, $40, $50 dollars per mold, I decided to make my own. I made these yesterday. I will be demonstrating to you shortly how I did them. But what I do is I start out by using a very dense clay called sculpture clay. Um, it's put out by standard ceramic clay. I get mine at Portland Pottery. Um, there's one in Maine. There's also one in Massachusetts. I'm sure you can get it anywhere that sells standard clay. At Portland Pottery, it's, um, it's clay number 420. But what I like about this clay is it's very dense. It's got a lot of grog, which is sand. It's a very, very heavy clay, so your mold does come out very heavy and it's very, very durable. This is the underside of the mold, which would be the slump part of the mold, um, um, the hump part, I mean, which would mean that you would put your, uh, your mold, or if you have a slab roller, or if you roll out your clay, you would put it on top of it and drape it, and then you'd let it dry. Uh, you'd have to pull it off right when it gets to the right stage so it doesn't dry in and crack. But if you turn the mold over, then it becomes a slump mold. Now what I've done with this mold on the interior is I put a, a texture in there which was actually just my fingers pushing onto the clay as I was creating the mold. Now you'll find if you use the sculpture clay that it's very very durable and dense and it does take very well to different patterns that you put in it. Um, the good thing about making these yourself is you can put a design a pattern right on it um, after you make the clay the mold you can you know embed it with a flower stamp or whatever and then when you do create your bowls the patterns right in there but I find and I what I like to do is I like to slab out my clay and then pattern the clay and then put it in the mold because I find sometimes that if you have a pattern that's distinctive like a flower or um, a starfish and you're putting the clay on and you're moving the clay and you're spreading the clay out the pattern seems to get a little distorted so I'd rather put the pattern on keep the mold clean with no design and then put the pattern onto the clay when I actually do it but if you want to put a pattern on that's pretty repetitive like something like this it's really not going to matter. I'm now going to make a little bit of a different design. I want a, a little bit of a bigger mold so I can make say a, a large salad bowl or whatever. But these molds are just about leather hard now and almost ready to go into the kiln. Okay, I'm now ready to start my fifth mold and I really want this to be a little bit of a larger platter or a bowl. So I'm going to use a bowl about this size. Now you have to remember that it's not going to end up this size, it's going to end up much smaller because I'm going to put the clay inside which gives it a, a smaller dimension and then once the, the clay comes out the mold comes out and the mold goes through the first firing it's going to shrink the mold and then you have to remember that when you actually put the stoneware in here into the mold or onto the, um, the slump or the hump part of the mold that's also going to shrink. So say this is a 15 inch bowl you probably will end up with about a 10 or 11 inch bowl after this. So you always want to start a lot larger than you really want the result to be. This is the clay I was telling you about, the standard sculpture clay. It's gray, uh, very dense, lots of grog, lots of sand, it will dry out your hands. So you'll need to moisturize after you work with this. But all I really need to make the mold is the pattern I want, the bowl, the clay, a sponge, and a little rubber tool. And I use this to, to cut the edges until it dries. Even though I'm going to put this inside and we know that it will shrink in so I don't have to be too concerned about getting this out quickly, I can let this dry almost to leather hard before I tip it over and pop it out. Um, I still do spray the inside with a coating. You can use WD-40. I just prefer to use cooking spray, PAM, or anything you have in the house. 
because it releases the mold very quickly and, and easily. Now if I was to make a, a mold um, on the outside, then I would be more concerned about getting it out quickly and wrapping it in plastic. But if you're just doing the inside of the platter or the bowl, it's going to shrink in and it should pop right out. I have a big cheese slicer here that I got for Christmas. I'm also doing this in my kitchen today. I usually do it in my pottery shed. I am the Little Red Pottery Shed on Etsy, but I also I usually do it in my pottery shed, but because this is so messless, there's no mess involved, I just do it in my kitchen. It's a little warmer in here. I don't have to heat up my shed. And I just slab out, cut out a big, big chunk of clay. I'm not probably going to use all of this. I might end up using half of this. But uh, I like to start with a big chunk. And I put it right into the dish. Easy as pie. And I start to press down with my hands. This is a large bowl, so it's going to take me a little longer than usual. I might have to patch in some more clay. I start to dig in with my fingers. This clay is so soft and it's so easy to work with that in no time you can make a mold. And I made six molds out of one block of clay. The clay was about 13 or 14 dollars for 25 pounds. So I made six, six molds for about $13, which is excellent, because if you were to buy these, you would probably pay $40, $50 for one mold. So I just move it down with my hands, and I'm, I'm kind of up high a little bit here with my island. If I was in my shed, the, the counter would be a lot lower, so it would be a lot easier for me to push down on this. But I just push down. Some potters will make a block of clay and then they'll cut it out and hollow it out, but I don't even do that. I just start out just like I'm making a bowl. So as you can see, easy. The little rib tool I'm going to be using, this little rubber rib tool, is going to do the rest for me. I don't want to make it too thick because then that will take away from the size of my, my mold. If I want to make this a slump mold, which means I would put the clay inside of it, I still want that depth. So basically, I'm just moving it up with my fingers. And you can do this with the rib tool too, but right now I'm just trying to get the, the thickness from the bottom up to the sides. I made five molds in about an hour and a half. Of course, I'm very particular once the ribbing's done. I don't like any cracks, not marks in my mold because those do come out when you use them. They will come out on your clay. So after this gets to leather hard stage, I pop it out of my mold. It's so easy to work with. You just take a sponge. If you have little lines underneath your mold or if you have little divots or anything that you can't get out, the wet sponge will smooth it right out. And there's so much grog in this clay that the grog just fills the gaps in so easily. All right, so basically what I've done here is I've got the clay in the mold, and now I'm going to take my magic, no water, just my little rubber rib, and I'm going to start smoothing. I think you can use, probably use regular stoneware clay on this. I just find that this sculpting clay is so durable. So I'm going to just continue to work with this and I'm going to get it to a nice thickness. I don't want it real thin. I want it to have some substance to it. 
but I don't want it too thick because I don't want to lose too much of the interior dimensions of the bowl. So I'm going to continue to work with this and I'm going to smooth everything out with this rubber rib. And after the rubber rib is done its job, I'm going to continue along the edges. Now I can make this so that it has a little bit of a lip, so that if I want to do a slump mold, um, a slump bowl, and I can put a ribbing on the side or on the edge that will hold it, or I can just cut it right off and uh, make it more of a just a standard bowl with no rim. This is working very fast, very easy. You don't want to put any water in this. You don't need water. If you buy this clay and you keep it at room temperature, and you seal it tight, it will last forever. I've had this for over a year in my pottery shed. If you use this clay on the wheel, it's going to be really rough on your hands, but I have, I do use this when I do hand building with the extruder or it works well with hand building. Meant to be sculpt, sculpting clay, people, people do use it on the wheel. So I've got a lot of thickness here around the rim and around the edges. I'm going to dig it out. It's coming out very smooth. I'm going to dig it out so that the thickness along the inside walls is about the same and I have a full dimension bowl. It's that easy. I usually let this dry overnight. If I make it in the afternoon, by the next morning, I will run a, a little needle tool around the edge. I'll tip it over and it pops right out. And that's why I like to use the Pam. And don't worry about that, that just burns right off in the kiln. Well, you can just wipe it off with a washcloth after, after you pop it out. Wipe the Pam right off. Because you're going to want to smooth the underside of this too with a sponge take out any kind of seams uh, that have um, gone underneath the mold or any kind of little air holes because those will show up. So I'm just about done here. As you can see, it's only taken me a few minutes to make this. I want to make sure the thickness is just about right and then it's all along the, the edges. I've already lost a lot of dimension by putting this clay inside the bowl. So this is not as big as the bowl looks, and it will also be smaller, like I said, once you fire this mold and then refire the mold with your own clay. I like to go to yard sales and Salvation Army stores. I like to buy the biggest bowls I can find. I'm pushing along the rim, along the bottom, to get it tight to the bowl one more time. So if you want to make this pattern, I'm not going to do this with this one, but if you want to make a pattern on the inside, this would be the time to do it. You could press in any one, any design you want, a stamp or anything like that. And by making a pattern on the inside, then you could use this as a slump mold, and you could actually, once this becomes your permanent mold, you could put your clay inside of it, and then when it pops out, this pattern will be on the outside of the bowl. Okay, I want to make sure that this is tight against the edges. I'm going to take my needle tool and I'm just going to cut off all the extra clay. Get the extra 
clay out of the way here. And then after I make sure it's all pressed against the edges, it's probably only going to be using not even half of the clay I put in here, but because the least little bit of deviation will show up on your final product. So you want to make sure that it's going to be perfectly round. And you can use this process for making any kind of molds. You could do plates, dinner plates, small plates. I will show you later on. I actually made a very beautiful starfish bowl. Okay, so now I'm going to do the final smoothing. The final smoothing of the edges here. I hope I'm not boring you. But I know that when I started out doing pottery, I relied on YouTube. I learned more on YouTube than I did at any class I've ever been to. Just by watching other people. So I decided to share this with you. It's so easy and so much fun. You can do it in your kitchen. No mess, no water, very little cleanup. You can see I'm taking out the final divots that I put in with my fingers. I like a clean mold more than a patterned mold because then my possibilities are endless. I can buy textured stamps, I can make my own stamps. I'm not stuck to one design. All right. I'm going to do the final trimming of the of the edges. I'm also going to take off the whole rim. By doing this I can see if my mold is uneven. So as you can see, it's showing me that I have a little bit more thickness here and a little more thickness here that I have to smooth out. But with my rib, I'm just gonna smooth all that out, take all that extra thickness, just so that my final bowl will be the same dimension on each side. And that's all you do to make a hump mold. Let this dry overnight. Give it about 12 to 15 hours. It will dry in wood. You don't have to worry about it cracking on you. And when it dries and you pop it out, then what you're going to need to do is take your sponge and take out any kind of imperfections in the clay. I've told you that a few times already, but that's so easy to do. And you can take out any little seam. Like if, as you can see, I've got these little, my rib tool's making little seams here I'm trying to clear out, but after that's popped out, you can do that yourself with the sponge and that's all you need to do. Take your needle tool right around the rim. As easy as one, two, three. This is a huge bowl. And if you bought a hump mold or a slump mold this big, it would be very expensive. So there you are. There is your first hump mold.
slash slump mold. Happy pottery!